gentlemen, thank you very much uh, for remaining with us. This is Smart24, where we drive your business. And my name is Anthony Sabali, and I'm here as your host now, as I promised. Of course, uh, we have a special guest today, uh, Mr. Malik Musumba, who is currently an investment uh, strategist and uh, has worked with several uh, institutions with a wide range of experience in trading, especially on the exchanges. He has worked with the Johannesburg Stock Exchange and I think currently works with MN Capital Africa Advisors. And uh, he has a quite wealthy experience when it comes to uh, the financial markets. Uh, Mr. Musumba, you're most welcome to the Thank program. Thank you so much for having me here, Anthony. Yes. It's a pleasure to actually finally come around yes. to <laughs> meeting you on your show. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you, we've been very highly anticipating of you because um, when I looked at your profile a little bit, you've uh, you know had so much experience and I think you're very passionate when it comes to financial markets. Yes, indeed. T um, tell us about that, uh, you know, the story. How did you get uh, so enthusiastic? Um, you know, the thing is, you know, when everyone keeps asking, what do you want to be? Mm -hmm. I heard my friends saying pilots, mm -hmm. lawyers, and whatnot, but I've always wanted to be on Wall Street. Yes. And in as much as I've, I haven't got into Wall Street yet, but I trade on the Wall Street. So yes. in, in a way, I've actually made it to Wall Street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... industry and that's daily yeah so i've always wondered if i could get like 0 0.0001 of that money yes mm -hmm. how far could i be mm -hmm. and that's always motivated me to always want to learn and get into the industry mm -hmm. from a very young age mm -hmm. i've always wanted to be a part of the industry of the financial markets yeah yeah now tell us about your journey where you started from of course studying uh, business and commerce and then how you got into the financial market space yeah, well, um, I did my undergrad in, it was a BCom, mm. and then... I, no, no, no. Mm. I studied at Rhodes University in okay. South Africa. Wow, okay. Yeah, I did uh, all my university education. Mm. So I started with a BCom, which is a Bachelor of Commerce, mm. but I was really, really interested in financial economics, mm. you know, because mm. to me, that's where my passion lay. Mm. And after that, I decided to do what they call an honors mm. in financial economics. Yeah. And from that, I was able to add on a few more courses and mm. then do finance, masters in financial markets. Yeah. yeah, because you require to have a quantitative background. Mm. Yeah. Now, talking about the African markets, um, when was the first time you thought of buying a stock and what was the experience? <laughs> well, that's quite an interesting one because mm. My first ever stock was actually um, Banco Baroda. Mm. I went to Diane Blair and Missouri Courts mm. and I got the little money I'd saved up at the time. I said, now's the time. I was actually new to the game. Mm. Sorry about that. I hadn't really like, gotten to learn enough or a lot about how mm. the markets work yeah. and whatnot, but I was really passionate about it. So I decided to go to Dan Blair. Mm. I opened up my brokerage account. I put in all my little pocket money at the time, mm. <laughs> and I went away. Okay. Now you are still a student back then. Yeah, yeah. I was okay. pretty much. I was still a, a young student, possibly mm. my first year or so. Okay. And then um, it so happened that after three, four years, mm. I came back hoping to have seen an appreciation in my stock. Mm. I found the stock still trading at the same level which I got it. <laughs> yes. And I was given a, a dividend of like, it was, it was a dividend more than 20,000 mm. for all those years. Yeah. And I thought to myself, if I had bought goats, mm. maybe I would have been better off, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yes. But um, that only just helped me learn that even with financial markets, mm. you have to, you have to be worry about where you invest your money. Because at the end of the day, you're looking for a return yeah. that should be above market return. Mm. Yeah. Now, uh, the, like you said, you, you went away, you came back, and did that discourage you? Most people, okay, in Uganda in particular, especially the investors we've been able to interface with, uh, they say, okay, the returns, mm -mm, and the market as well is not moving and so on. 
and they are quite hesitant to mm. invest because of uh, some of what the things like you've mentioned. Yeah. Uh, should it did, did, did that sink your desire and your passion for investing in the markets? Yeah, well, at the time, mm. one could have said I, I was demotivated, mm. but then it only um, spurred me to understand or rather to research mm. on how to make greater returns. Yeah. Because, for example, in as much as I did make dividends, I got to realize that I had invested mm. in an illiquid market. There's not so much transactions happening, so mm. you do not expect to have um, returns per se because there are not enough buyers mm. and in sellers market. in the market. Mm. So if you put your money there, it's basically just going to sit. Yeah. You know? Mm. Now, when you move to South Africa and uh, we got part of the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, what was the difference uh, there? Well, the JSE is actually Africa's largest stock exchange. Mm. It was actually founded in 1887. Mm. Um, so, based off that, mm. the mere fact that it has been around for so long, mm. and Africa's largest stock exchange by capitalization, you get to realize that there is a lot of market, there's a lot of market. Mm. There is so many buyers and sellers. Because yet again, like I'd, I'd failed to mention, when I went to Baroda to sell my stock, mm. they told me they would have to first find a buyer before the transaction could be completed. Mm. And to me, I found it strange because I should be able to sell my stock in the very instant. Mm. Yes, you need to sell. Yes, if mm. I need to sell right now, I should be guaranteed that there will be a buyer on the other opposite side mm. willing to buy my, yes. my yes, And that's the kind of market we're talking about mm. Yeah. Now, when you move to South Africa, you see that the, the, the stock has over 425 listings mm. with various products, you know. Mm. And our market here, for example, we have 18 listed companies mm. and eight of which are cross-listed from Kenya. Mm. Um, is it the number of companies or listings uh, that affects activity? Is it the government? What do you think are the forces that, you know, push people to invest, or what do you think should be done to push people, especially in Uganda now, to start investing in the capital markets? That's a very good question, Anthony, because I've long thought about this. Mm. And um, in my opinion, mm. I think government should put incentives for domestic companies to actually list. Because one thing about government, mm. if I, to follow up on the addresses I keep hearing of the president and whatnot, mm. They say that um, bank rates are too high. Yeah. And the whole, the whole notion of having a stock market is it's there to enable companies to get um, financing mm. in exchange for equity yes. at much lower rates. Because here you're not going to be borrowing. Yes. Um, commercial bank rates are very high. They're in the tens. Mm per annum, which is quite discouraging for investors. Mm. But if you do provide incentives, for example, tax holidays and whatnot, mm. to companies, domestic companies, to mm. list onto the ex stock exchange, for example, Mokwan. Yes. You know, that's a very huge company. Old company. One of the oldest. And one of the oldest. And mm. yet again, it's not listed it's not on, the, on the exchange. <laughs> yes. You know, such companies, Kakira, what? Kak yes. If we can have them mm. list on the stock exchange mm. and have Ugandans provide capital in exchange for equity, yes. I feel like it would spur investment in the stock exchange. Mm. And um, I actually liked what the president did because he went ahead and kind of coerced MTN. Yes. to list into the mm. Ugandan Securities Exchange. And you could see from the IPO mm. how well people took up um, the shares. Mm. I mean, Ugandans, it's not that we're afraid to invest. Yes. We just don't find it worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the thing that most Ugandans ask is, and uh, that is a thing that I've also been trying to investigate. Besides mm. the dividends and um, uh, the capital gain, Yeah. Are there other ways of, you know, making money on the stock market? And there are products we've heard of, like derivatives mm. and uh, other securities uh, uh, that are modified, kind of, uh, to make people, you know, you know, 
invest, you know, to yeah. diversify the whole thing. Because when you tell someone, ah, you know what, when you invest in this company, uh, they might, because you're not even sure, they mm. might give you a dividend at the end of the year mm. if they make money, or you sell your shares at a higher price. Someone will be like, honestly, when am I going to do that? So what are the ways uh, that the stock market can be profitalized and made more profitable? And what are some of those products you think uh, people should look out for? Well, it's a good thing you mentioned derivatives. Mm. Um, derivatives are a new, unique kind of product. Mm. And uh, personally, I would not advise novices to get into derivatives okay. because with deri derivatives comes leverage. Now, leverage is a double-edged sword. Mm. You can make 10x, 20x, 100x, mm. you know, yeah. with your derivative, but it can also happen that you can also lose just as much yeah. because of leverage. Mm. So leverage is kind of like a double-edged sword, and I wouldn't encourage people that are not well-versed mm. with such products to actually trade derivatives. However, um, there are things called ETFs, mm. electronic traded funds. Yes. Those are much cheaper for mm. people to get into the stock exchange because if you may find that, for example, now if we're looking at um, some 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 stocks that are quite expensive quite mm. pricey in terms of unit unit share mm. you might find that you may not be able to purchase the bare minimum yes. standard a thousand mm. shares mm. you know but with etfs they help you in the sense that the low uh, you can get whatever amount of shares mm. at a low cost, mm. you know? Mm. So it kind of helps those who are trying to get into the markets to have a feel. Of course, of course then there's all, um, the index, index yes, shares, index. the ones that track yeah. the index, mm. they will give you a bit of a proportion of everything. Mm. And that's a good way to also diversify make money. Risk. Di yes, diversify risk. And mm also try to benchmark with the market. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's go into a short break. We need a further explanation, especially on the derivatives and the ETFs and how they work. Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are still talking to Mr. Malik Musumba. Uh, we're going into a short break, but if you want to learn more on the strategies you can use to make yourself money on the stock market, stay around.